morning, greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. It is, it, 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 it is indeed a joy and a great privilege to be here live on Facebook once again to minister the Word of God. I trust the Lord everyone is in good health and happiness regardless of our situation in our world. Amen. Talking about the situation in our world, yesterday I mentioned I had a dream about uh, when in the sky when I saw the, the sign 20 to 12, I uh, remember. And when I checked that thing and I really realized what God was showing me. God has given us eight years of grace from 2012 to 2020 and 2021. You know, with all of my heart, I believe that the, the tribulation period, the tribulation period is uh, as about to begin. And uh, what is coming to this world? Amen. Praise the Lord. And I want you to encourage you. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Let's keep on praying and walk in the ways of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In India right now, there has been a second wave of the coronavirus. Yesterday alone, 150,000 people uh, was tested positive for the coronavirus. And many died because the hospitals did not have enough space to take them in. Praise the Lord. It now started. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, welcome relatives, friends, family, members from churches all around the world. God bless you. Those who are watching, God bless you richly. It's indeed a joy and a privilege to be here this morning. Amen. To praise, to minister the word of God. Before we get into the word of God, it always says, Jesus says, Lo, I am with you always. I will never leave you nor forsake you even unto the end of this world. It's not comforting. Is that wonderful? Is not that a great assurance I have this morning, and we all have this morning? I can say, safely see that God, the Holy Spirit, is here with me this morning. Also, he said this verse: "Healing is a children prayer." And the first covenant he made with man was a covenant of healing. He was wounded for our transgressions; he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. With his stripes we are healed. I am healed. You are healed. We are healed this morning. In the name of Jesus, I declare healing upon God's people in the name of Jesus. Be healed this morning for whatever sickness, pain, disease, infirmities, evil, and work of darkness. For the blood of Jesus so efficacious and the blood of Jesus so powerful. The blood of Jesus so repellent that destroys every yoke and every bondage and every fetter and every evil and every work of darkness. Every spirit of witchcraft and obia and demonic forces and evil. I command to go in the name of Jesus. I set God people free in the name of Jesus. Every plague, no plague shall come like that dwelling. Every coronavirus, no plague shall come. I see all my relatives and friends and family and burning under the blood. That no coronavirus will cut them off. No coronavirus will come in their dwelling. I build a hedge around them right now this morning. I build a hedge around myself and family and relatives. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. And I pray God in this morning, even now, that you dip me in the river of liquid fire of the Holy Spirit. As I minister your words. Your words will go forth on the anointing and power of the Holy Spirit. And many be healed, many be saved, many be blessed, many be encouraged, many be set free. Many will come to know the Lord God as their Savior this morning. Into thy hands I come with my life. I thank you for the flame of fire I received many years ago upon my head. I pray God you, you straight wrap me with the anointing of the Holy Spirit this morning. As I minister your words, your words will go forth on the anointing and power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name precious name. I commit my life and I commit thy words. I ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise God. It's indeed a joy and a privilege my friends to be here this morning. Yes, I speak on the peace fire triangle. Hallelujah. I trust it's being a blessing to your heart. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And this morning i like to speak on discerning the enemy. Discerning the enemy. Hallelujah. The purpose of the fire trap of offense. We must discern the enemy. The enemy purpose of the fire, fire trap. My friends this morning. Hallelujah. My scripture is taken from John chapter 8 verse 44. And John 10 10. Satan is a liar. I said Satan is a liar. Satan is a deceiver. A thief and a murderer. According to John 8 44. Hallelujah. Praise God. When we are trapped in offense, our, our focus is on the wildfire, not the peace fire. At the fire trap of offense, we are taken captive by the enemy to do his will. He wants to hinder our walk with Jesus Christ, according to 2 Timothy 2.26. One of Satan's 
a goal, my friends, and a fire trap is to tempt us to despise those who wrong us. Who wrong us? Jesus specifically warned against this in Matthew chapter 18, verse 10. It is not the person that wrongs you who steals your peace, according to Ephesians 6.12. When we think we are justified in despising a brother or sister in Christ, we deceive, we are deceived, according to 1 John 4, 20 and 21. Hallelujah. We defeat the enemy's scheme by pursuing Jesus at the fire, fire, peace fire to receive his the love he has for those who have wronged us, according to Luke chapter 6, verse 27 and 28. I hear me with my friends this morning. We all call, cause and take offense from time to time. Did you hear me this morning? We all cause and take offense from time to time. Remember that the Lord is always at work. The Lord is always at work. Hallelujah. He is always at work. Hallelujah. Praise God uh, to deliver us uh, from the fire trap of offense. Hallelujah. There are four ways to stay free from the fire trap of offense this morning. One way is to stay out of the fire trap is to overlook a, a potential offense. According to Proverbs chapter 9 verse 11. Hallelujah. Overlooking an offense is appropriate. When they can honestly go before the Lord and forgive, forget, move forward in a relationship with the person who offended us if the offender never occurred. Hallelujah. The second way is to stay out of the fire trap is to reject the bait. Refuse to take offense according to Matthew 16, 21 and 23. Hallelujah. Praise God. The third way to stay out of the fire trap is to cut off the offending source in order to escape from the fire trap according to Matthew 18 verse 8 and 9. Hallelujah. My friends, the bait on the trap exposes the heart, exposes the heart desire. Remember James 4, 1 to 4. The Lord delivers us from the fire trap when we, we cut off those desires and return to the Feast fire. Hallelujah. I hear you, my friends, this morning. Hallelujah. These desires can rise from what we look at at the eyes. That we are gapsing for the hand. Or whether we are trying to, whether we are trying to go defeat. The meaning of the word translate cut off implies letting the thing fall to the ground. And do not even pay attention to where it falls. Let it flee. Hallelujah. Did you get me, this, my friends, this morning? Hallelujah. The fourth way to stay free from the fire trap is to be rescued this morning. Is to be rescued. When we are unable to free from the fire trap of offense, the Lord pursues us in order to set us free and bring us back where we belong. Hallelujah. Praise God. God wants to bring us back where we belong. Hallelujah. It's time, my friends, we start relying on God's power. God's power can change your possibilities. I said it's time we start relying on God's power. And God's power can change your, can change your possibilities this morning. Hallelujah. Strange fire is an attempt to do the Lord's will in a manner that he has not approved or authorized. Leviticus 10, 1, 2, Genesis 4, 3, 7. I said strange fire is an attempt to do the Lord's will in a manner that he has not approved or authorized. Hallelujah. In conflict, strange fire means coming to the peace fire with your own agenda and asking the Lord to bless it rather than humbling yourself. Seeking the Lord and asking that he use you to fulfill his agenda. Strange fire represents the attempt to resolve conflict in some way other than relent, relentless reliance on Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Strange fire focuses on bringing an end to the conflict by pursuing an acceptable outcome. Win-win scenarios. A ceasefire that does not be, bring reconciliation or glorify Jesus Christ. I you think, my friends, this morning? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hope uh, you understand what I'm saying this morning. Hallelujah. I recommend that you look at this uh, message twice. Wildfire accelerants represents worthy of fleshly different driven attempts to extinguish conflict wildfires. Hallelujah. A wildfire accelerant can never bring about the reconciliation and restoration of relationship that glorify Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah. Pride manifests itself in arrogance. I says pride manifests itself in arrogance, self-righteousness and intellectual or spiritual superiority. It will overemphasize truth and underemphasize mercy, according to Proverbs 8.13 and Proverbs 16, verse 5. Hallelujah. And also many other scriptures. Revenge seek to settle a score. Revenge seek to settle a score, even get or ex ex exact a power of flesh. Or, or extract a pound of flesh or more from someone has wronged us. It exposes a lack of trust in God's promise to take revenge on behalf of his people. <coughs> Hallelujah. <coughs> Leviticus 19 verse 17 and 18. Hallelujah. Praise God. Anger also stirs up strife and does not produce the righteousness that reflects the image of Jesus Christ. No, it never never reflects the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lion can never extinguish a conflict wildfire. Many people at high level can really lie. I tell you, lie, they can lie to the biggest, biggest of, of amount of things and cover at their level. Because they're high in position, they can tell all the lies and do all the wrongs and think they can cover, but you cannot hide from God. Hallelujah. Any deceptive peace that the lie might establish will eventually ignite into a more intense conflict when the deceit is exposed. Deceit always exposed. Be sure your sin will find you out no matter how high you are. People will know you're lying and you're deceiver and you're undermining person. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Peaceful accelerant. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name. While there are many accelerants that can increase the intensity of a conflict wildfire, there is only one accelerant that brings God, peace, peace fire power into a conflict. God's agape love. Did you get that? Peace, fire, power into a conflict. God's agape love. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 4 to 8. God's agape love is undeserved. Unarmed and unconditional. Unconditional, my friend. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Lord reveals his love to us while we were yet sinners who did not deserve his love. According to Romans chapter 5 verse 8. When God revealed his love to us, he is revealing himself. He is revealing himself for he is love. 1 John 4.16, the supernatural love that the Father provides in a conflict while God is received, is received, my friends, when we abide in Jesus Christ, the peace fire, according to John 15, verse 9 and 12. Hallelujah. The power of God's love sends us to the wildfire as the ambassadors of reconciliation. To treat others how God has treated us, according to 2 Corinthians 5.16 and 20. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. The fire rescue, my friends, is very important. Rescuing in a relationship from a conflict, while the fire is like pursuing a lost sheep. Pursuing a lost sheep in Matthew 18, verse 12 to 14. The reconciliation triangle and the defies the three primarily features of relationship reconciliation. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. The battle between the flesh and the spirit can be encountered at any, at any stage of the reconciliation process. Yes, I say the battle between the flesh and the spirit can be encountered at any stage of the reconciliation process. Let me take some water. Hallelujah. I am preaching every day and instead sometimes I try to lose my voice a little. Hallelujah. Praise God. I said, the fire rescue is, is not a formula that guarantees reconciliation in the steps. Uh, if, the, if the steps are properly followed. Notice, if the steps are properly followed. The goal of every stage of confrontation is the pursuit of reconciliation. Hallelujah. The loving pursuit of lost sheep are not the pursuit of our own agenda. Or desired outcome according to Romans chapter 12 verse 18. Hallelujah. Resolving material issue does not always lead to reconciliation. 
But the reconciliation of relationship, loving one another, accelerates the resolution of material issues. Regardless of how others respond, we will experience the Lord peace when we maintain, we, we, we remain, I mean, when we remain in God's love and treat others, treat others the way the Father has treated us in Jesus Christ. With grace, with truth, and with mercy. With grace, with truth, and with mercy. Hallelujah. We must confront, confront in love. Confront love, the exposure, confrontation of sin. Hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus taught that whether, whenever someone sin against us, we or we sin against another, we are to go to them alone to confront the situation. According to Matthew 18, verse 15, Matthew 5, verse 23 and 24. Hallelujah. If an initial confrontation does not result in reconciliation, Hallelujah. The Lord is, instructs us to take two or three others with us to try again. Matthew 18, verse 16. If a second confrontation does not result in reconciliation, the Lord instructs us to turn the matter over to church according to Matthew 8, verse 17. Hallelujah. When we confront a brother or sister, we are to go in a spirit of gentleness. Remaining weary of temptation, according to Galatians 6, verse 1. Uh, spending time with the Lord at the peace fire prepares us for a loving confrontation that is, is a spirit led, that is spirit led, rather than a hostile confrontation motivated by the flesh and the force of at work in the wildfire. Did you get that this morning? Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We must humbly confess. Hallelujah. Humbly confess, my friends. When we are confronted with our sins, the Lord provides us with an opportunity to consider our ways and humbly acknowledge our need for the Lord's transforming work in the area of our lives where sin is exposed. According to Haggai chapter 1 verse 7. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Bible teaches that exposure, confrontation of sin produce two types of grief. Sorrow, worldly sorrow and godly sorrow. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 7 verse 10. Worldly sorrow produces self-pity. Excuse, embarrassment, blame and a victim mentality. Godly sorrow produces repentance, a change in direction. Hallelujah. The first response after our sin is exposed is to reconcile with God by humbly confessing our sins to Him. According to Psalms 51 verse 4 and 1 John 1 9. The second response after our sin is exposed is to confess our sins to those affected by it and to pray for them according to James 5 16. How a confession is communicated has a significant impact on whether, on whether the reconciliation will occur. Communicate with grace. I says communicate with grace and wisdom. Hallelujah. The seven A's of confession address everyone involved, all those affected by our sin. Avoid it. But and, and maybe do not try to excuse your wrongs. Admit specifically both attitudes and actions. Acknowledge the hurt. Express sorrows for hurting someone. Accept the consequences, such as making restitution. Alter your behavior. Change your attitudes and actions. Ask for forgiveness. Hallelujah. Ask for forgiveness. The most powerful word is confession. Will you forgive me? Will you forgive me? Will you forgive me? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I remember a story. My dad is now 86 years of age. But when he was 83 years of age, if he had died, he would have gone to a lost eternity because he did something wrong. And one day the Holy Spirit came and there was a tremendous anointing and my little daughter was, start, my daughter was speaking in town. I said, Dad, let's go down. says, go by the gate and call for grandfather. And he came down and my mother came down. And she, and she saw the prophesy and he says, you have to forgive your son and son forgive your father for what he has done. And he said, because you have forgiven each other, because you have forgiven your son, you will enter into heaven. And that was released from him. And he's now 86. I have the assurance that when he died, he would my friends, there are many sons and fathers who are not speaking. 
and many children and the parents are not speaking. I want to tell you something. Get that reconciled. Hallelujah. Ask the Lord to forgive. Forgive your dad, forgive your son, forgive your mother, forgive your siblings, forgive your relatives, forgive your brothers, and you will be able to make it. Hallelujah. The most powerful words in confession will be forgive me. Hallelujah. And surely, God, freely, freely forgive this morning. Freely forgive. When sin is confessed and forgiveness requested, the Lord commands us to forgive. The Lord for commands us to forgive. Luke 17, 3, 4, Matthew 18, 21, 22. Because of what Jesus Christ accomplished at the cross, the Lord freely forgives us when we confess our sins to Him. When we confess our sins to Him and He empowers us to treat others the same way, according to Ephesians 4, verse 32. We cannot earn or deserve God's forgiveness. Therefore, we have no right to impose such requirements on those who wrong us. Our ability to forgive flows from the presence of Jesus Christ in our lives, in our lives through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Galatians 2 verse 20 uh, and Luke 2, 23 verse 34. When we refuse to forgive, we open ourselves to spiritual bondage and torment until we forgive, according to Matthew 18 verse 23 to 35. Whenever we confess, whatever we confess to the Father, he, he forgives. Whatever is confessed to us, He will, He will empower us to forgive. We are the ambassadors of reconciliation. We are the ambassadors of reconciliation. What does it mean to forgive? The fourth promise of forgiveness. The, my friends, it's very important. I will not dwell on this incident. I will not bring up this incident again and use it against you. Hallelujah. I will not talk to others about this incident. And I will not let this incident stand between us or hinder our personal relationship. Subject to appropriate godly boundaries. Hallelujah. The word that can extinguish the wildfire, I forgive you. Listen carefully. I said the words that extinguish the word that extinguish the wildfire is I forgive you. Now there are four promises of forgiveness. Four promises of forgiveness. Hallelujah. Through forgiveness, God tears down the walls that our sins have built. And he opens the way for a renewed relationship with him. This is exactly what we must do if we are to forgive as the Lord forgive us. Hallelujah. We uh, must release the person who has wronged us from the penalty of being separated from us. We must not hold wrong, wrongs against others. Not think about the wrongs and not punish others for them. Hallelujah. Therefore, forgiveness may be described as a decision to make four promises. I will not dwell on this incident. I will not bring up this incident again and again and use it against you. Something God injects. The Bible tells us, and God just injects this in the truth of the Spirit. If you have unforgiveness in your heart against anyone, you will not go to heaven. Unless you ask forgiveness and receive forgiveness, you will not enter into the presence of the Lord. Forgiveness, unforgiveness like cancer, it destroys the soul and the body and the mind. Hallelujah. It, it is your blood like cancer. So if you have unforgiveness and if you have bitterness, I have some relatives so bitter. Hallelujah. Bitterness can kill you like cancer. Hallelujah. Cancer, it up the soul. So release yourself from unforgiveness and bitterness. It will not bring up a, ah, my friends, you, it is important that you do that. Hallelujah. I will not talk to others about this incident. I will not let this incident stand between us or hinder our personal relationship. <coughs> Hallelujah. By making, by making and keeping these promises, you can tear down the walls. You can tear down the walls and stand between you and your offender. Your promise is not to dwell on a bro on a, 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 a broad over the problem or to punish by holding the person at a distance. You clear the way for your relationship to develop unhindered by memorizing, 
my memories of past wrongs. And this is exactly, my friends, what God does for us. And it is what He calls us to do for others. I says, this is exactly what God does for us and that He has called us to do for others. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God, my friends. When I think about some things, it tears my heart inside. As God opened my eyes to see how you have sinned against others. He stimulatiously uh, offers us a way to find freedom from our, of your past wrongs. It is called confession. Many people have never experienced this freedom because they have never learned. They have never learned how to confess their wrongs, honestly and unconditionally. Instead, they use words like these, I'm sorry if I hurt you. Let's just forget the past. I suppose I could have done a better job. I guess it's not all your fault. These token statements really trigger, trigger my friends, genuine, genuine forgiveness and reconciliation. If you really want to make peace, ask God to help you bring grace by humbly and thoroughly admit your wrongs. One way to do this is to use the seven A's this morning. Hallelujah. Address everyone involved. All those who you affected. Avoid it. Avoid if, but, and maybe, maybe. Do not try to excuse your wrongs. Admit, my friends, admit specifically both attitudes. Attitudes and actions. Acknowledge the hurt. Express sorrow for hurting someone. Accept, accept the consequence, such as making restitution. Alter your behavior. Change your attitude and action. Ask forgiveness. Ask forgiveness. And my friends, these are very important things. Hallelujah. The reconciliation is very important. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The reconciliation triangle. Confrontation, confession, and forgiveness. It is, not a, if, it is not a formula that guarantees reconciliation in every conflict. At every, at every stage of the reconciliation process, the world, the flesh, and the devil will work to keep the wildfire burning. It will work to keep the wildfire burning until they get what they want. The enemy will bait the trap offense at each other. I stop inject something. The Bible tells us, and the God who is says, my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. My people perish because of a lack of knowledge. When someone confronts us with a sin, we might be tempted to take offense at a confrontation and make excuse for our sins. Deny that we have sinned or attack the person confronting us. The person confronting us can be tempted to take offense if we, dis dis if we disagree or refuse to acknowledge our sin. It is the Holy Spirit role to bring conviction of sin, not ours. Galatians 6, 1, John 16, 7, verse 8. When we confess, or when we, we confess sin, we might be tempted to take offense. When we make an honest confession, but the person we, we sin against criticizes or discounts our confession. When we forgive someone, we might be tempted to extend shallow forgiveness, fake forgiveness, or, or a forgiveness that is motivated by something other than our love for the Lord. The person we are willing to forgive might be offended if we tell the person that we forgive them before that person acknowledge and confess sin. Hallelujah. I hear my friends this morning. I recommend you listen to this message two times. If offense occurs <coughs> during attempts at a, a reconciliation, may reigns at peace fire, give thanks and wait patiently on the Lord. He is at work according to Romans chapter 12 verse 18. When a fire rescue fails, my friends, when a fire rescue fails, hallelujah, let me take some water again. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, a firebreaker is a gap or other 
fuel sources that slows or stops the process of a wildfire. When a brother or sister in Christ refuses to reconcile a re conflicting relationship, <clears throat> after repeated attempts as described in Matthew chapter 18, Jesus taught that we should treat them as if they were an unbeliever. Matthew chapter 18, verse 17. Hallelujah. A spiritual fire break represents a break in Im Im intimate spiritual, uh, spiritual fellowship with a brother or sister in Christ, who refuse to repent and reconcile a broken relationship. At the firebreaker, we treat the unrepentant brother or sister evangelic evangelically as someone who does not know the Lord rather than as a member of the body of Christ. The ultimate purpose of the firebreak is to reform God's love for lost sheep in order to lead them to repentance and restoration. The firebreak stage of the fire rescue is often a place of intense spiritual uh, warfare. It is a place for spiritual warriors and ambassadors of reconciliation. It is not a place of stand alone. The unrepentant brother or sister is not, a, is not your enemy. I said the unrepentant brother or sister is not your enemy. Matthew 18 verse 8 and 20. Hallelujah. Sometimes you must wait in the firebreak for days, weeks, months, or even years before reconciliation occurs. It is the Lord's patience at work in us that empowers us to wait for reconciliation to occur. Am I speaking to someone? Design your role in a conflict. Hallelujah. Designing your role in a conflict. Designing your role in a conflict is important. At the peace fire, there are four roles that exist, that exist in most conflicts. The offender, the offended, the ambassador, and the intercessor. Hallelujah. Praise God. The offender is a person who calls an offense, whether intentionally or unintentionally. At the peace fire, the offender asks the Lord, Is there something you are exposing in me that you want to change? And for the glory of Jesus Christ, grant me the grace to confess my sins and restore relationship with my brother and or sister. Hallelujah. Praise God. And offended, and offended, the, the offended, my sorry, the offended is a person who has taken offense. Whether consciously or subconsciously. At the peace fire, the offended asks the Lord, is there something you're exposing in me that you want to change? And for the glory of Jesus Christ, grant me the grace to forgive and restore relationship with my brother or sister. Did you get that, my friends? Hallelujah. Praise God. And the ambassador is a person involved in a conflict, wildfire, who represents Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God. The ambassador does the bidding of the one who sent him into the conflict to encourage any, any who will listen to be reconciled to God and to one another, according to 2 Corinthians 5.20. My friends, the intercessor is a person that is aware of a conflict, but has not been assigned the role of ambassador for that conflict. The Lord gives the intercessor a burden for one or more of the other involved in the conflict. The intercessor continues in prayer over the situation for as long as the Lord directs. According to James chapter 5 verse 16. I hear you my friends this morning. There is no role at the peace fire for a, a tail bearer or a gossip. Or gossip. Gossip is a wildfire accelerant. I says gossip is a wildfire accelerant. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Even when you manage to resolve personal offenses through confession and forgiveness, you may still need to deal with substantive issues which may involve money, property, or the exercise of certain rights. These issues should not be swept. These issues should not be swept under the carpet or automatically pass to higher authority. Instead, they should be negotiated in a biblical, faithful manner. As a general rule, you should 
try to negotiate substantive issue in a cooperative, in a cooperative manner rather than a competitive manner. In other words, my friends, uh, instead of aggressively pursuing your own interests and letting others look out for themselves, you should deliberately look for solutions that are beneficial to everyone involved. Are you hearing me, my friends, this morning? As the Apostle Paul puts it, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. But in humility, consider others better than yourselves. And that is what people are hard to do. I have a senior. I remember a man hired me in ministry and years and in higher level position. And he told me, I have better than you in the church. I do not know what a senior is at a higher level person is, 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 is asking me and pushing me to push you. Hallelujah. People think they get better than other people. Never think that way. It's not so. God does not like it when you do that. Do nothing with tough selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests, to the interests of others, according to Philippians 2, 3, 4. A biblical approach to negotiate may be summarized in five basic steps, which we refer to as the, the pause principle. The past principle, be peer, pray, get the facts, seek godly counsel, develop options, affirm relationships, show genuine concern and respect for each other, respect for each other, understand interests, identify others, identify others, concerns, desire, needs, limitations or fears. Search for creative solution. Prayerfully brainstorming, my friends. Evaluate options objectively and reasonably. Evaluate. Don't argue. Don't argue. You have some people just wait for opportunity to bring you down and destroy you. And even destroy your ministry. I have people in my life, they seize every opportunity to destroy my ministry and walking closer with the Lord. They seek every opportunity to get me out of the ministry. I do not know why, because men are afraid of the anointing. If you have ever used this approach to negotiate before, it will take time and practice and sometimes advice from others to become proficient at it. Hallelujah. It, 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 but it is well worth it. It is well worth the effort because learning the pause, learning the pause principle will help you not only to resolve your present dispute but also to negotiate more effectively in all areas of your life. In all, not in some areas of your life, but notice I say in all areas of your life. Hallelujah. Four attributes of conflict fighters. First, attribute of humility. Humility, my friends. It is the Lord's desire that we walk humbly with Him, according to Malachi 6 8. Malachi 6 8. My friends, God welcomes the humble in His presence, according to Isaiah 57, verse 15. The Lord promised to exalt the humble. Matthew 23, verse 12, James, and so on. Pride is the enemy of humility. And the peace fire proverbs, according to 20, Proverbs 29, verse 23. Humility is a measure of greatness in God's kingdom. Did you get that? I said, humility is a measure of greatness in God's kingdom, according to Matthew 18, verse 1 to 4. Jesus Christ displayed humility that pleases the Father by becoming a man and laying down his life, according to Philippians 2, 5, 11. The same mind, attitude, way of thinking that was in Jesus Christ is formed in us as we seek him and trust him to transform us into his image. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, according to Philippians 2, 13. Hallelujah. My friends, it's important. Hallelujah. It's important, my friends, to have a desire. The choice you make in response to conflict reveals your desire to please, to, to please self, others, or your heavenly father. Hallelujah. God has given us a free choice. 
Jesus Christ lived his life to please his heavenly father. Not himself or others. John 8, 29. The Bible teaches that Christians should desire to please God before others or self. 1 Thessalonians 4, 1. I give you the scriptures because of what I'm saying. I want to back everything I'm saying with the word of God. You cannot please God in a conflict, wildfire, and pursue selfish goals. Desire at the same time, according to Romans chapter 8, verse 8. As you spend time in God's presence, Jesus Christ can transform your desire from the inside out and give you his humble heart. Humble heart, mind, attitude that seeks to please and obey God in the midst of conflict. Hallelujah. The Lord promised to bless those that seek to please Him. Hallelujah. In Matthew 6, 33. My friends, third, the attribute of faith. Faith is very important. Hallelujah. Faith is very important. If we have the desire to please God, it is impossible to please God without faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. If, if, if we have a desire to please God, it is impossible, totally impossible, totally impossible to please God without faith. Like humility and a desire to please God. Faith is a gift from God. Faith is a gift from the Father, according to Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Hearing God's word produces faith, according to Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Believing the truth of God's word will not profit you unless you mix it with the faith that the word of God produces. Hebrews 4, 2 and James 9, 2, 2, 19. My friends, faith impacts your action and your words, according to James 2, 17. Faith is a shield of protection in wildfire. I said, faith is a shield of protection in the wildfire, according to Ephesians 6, 16. My friends, our faith in Jesus Christ is, is not, not in worldly wisdom or man's abilities and talents, according to Corinthians. Conflict, wildfire tests and refine our faith. When we, con when we focus on the wildfire rather than seek the Lord's presence, we can wander far away from faith. Hallelujah. Wonder, Father, for faith. Seeking the Lord's presence encourages us to respond to conflict by making faith choices that are grounded in our relationship with Jesus Christ, rather than making choices, more choices motivated by the circumstances or emotions generated in the wildfire. Hallelujah! Praise God this morning. Hallelujah! The full attribute love. Hallelujah! If if if, if we have the faith that is required to please God, the, that faith means nothing if it is not empowered and motivated by God's love. Hallelujah. It must be motivated by God's love. God is love and He pours His love into His people through the Holy Spirit. According to 1 John 4, 16 and Romans 5, 5, 5. The love that God provides is more powerful than fear, my friends. We are created for a love relationship with God that will result in an overflow, an overflow love into our relationship with others. Our love for one another is the authentic manifestation that we know and love God. The love of Jesus Christ should be manifested in, in, in our relationship with those in, in conflict wildfire who might consider us their enemy. By seeking the Lord's presence at the peace fire, we position ourselves to be filled with His love for others involved in the conflict. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, blessed be the name. I hope I'm helping this morning. Entering God's presence, presenting is living sacrifice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The primary purpose for, of entering God's presence in the midst of conflict is not to ask God to give us a desired outcome, but to present our body, a bodies a living sacrifice that He can use to accomplish His purpose, according to Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Hallelujah. We, and we can enter God's presence and draw near to Him at any time, not because we are worthy, but solemnly as a result of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The Bible teaches us to enter God's presence with thanksgiving and praise. Hallelujah. 
When, when we enter God's presence in prayer and seek Him, is seek Him, seek Him and His Word, He can reveal to us the path of life and fill us with joy, even in the midst of conflict. As we fellowship with and wait on the Lord at the peace fire, He changes our perspective, reveals His purpose, and fills us with His power and to stand in conflict while fire as His ambassador of reconciliation. Hallelujah. Peace and fire relationship, my friends, is very, marriage relationship is very important. Hallelujah. Pursuing God's purpose in marriage conflict, marriage and mystery of the church also is very, very important. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Marriage is a reflection of the great mystery concerning Christ and the church. According to Ephesians 5, 31, 32. Because Jesus Christ is coming back for the church. Hallelujah. He's married to the church. Jesus Christ is coming back for the church. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise, and those who are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Marriage is a reflection of the great mystery concerning the Christ and the church. In the Garden of Eden, God planted a tree of knowledge of good and evil among the trees of the garden. God instructed Adam not to eat of the fruit of this tree, and that if he, if he, if he did eat the fruit, he will certainly die. God caused a deep sleep to come upon Adam. He opened his side and removed a piece of Adam, which is a rib, and closed off the opening with flesh. God formed Eve from, from what he removed from Adam's side, and he brought her, he brought her to him. He brought her to Adam. But she was formed to be a suitable helper. A woman was formed to be a suitable helper. I told my wife that, praise God. I encourage her for during the year, from January to now, I've preached over 100 and something message. And I told her, honey, you need to come and preach a scripture. She says, I'm afraid to stand behind the camera. She don't like to be in social media. Anyway, I'll still pray for her. Adam declared, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Roles in marriage relationship, the wife submission, respect in marriage relationship are very important. The church as a body of Christ is to submit to Jesus Christ just as Jesus Christ submitted to the Father during his earthly ministry. Out of revenge of, of, for Jesus Christ, members of the body are called to submit to one another. Hallelujah. Submit to one another. In a marriage relationship, the husband represents Jesus Christ and the wife represents the church. The wife part of blessing is to submit to, submit to, hallelujah, submit to, submit to, sorry, submit to, the, 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 in the marriage relationship, the husband represents Jesus Christ and the wife represents the church. Wife represents the church. The wife part of blessing is to submit, uh, submit and respect her husband out of reverence for Jesus Christ. As, out, as unto the Lord, not because her husband is worthy or deserving of such respect. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me focus. Even when a husband is an unbeliever or is living like an unbeliever, the Lord uses the godly wife submission to bless and sanctify the husband and the family. Submission is not natural. The power, power for a wife to talk, to Sorry about that. Please call me later. I'm preaching right now. Sorry about that. Hallelujah. Praise God. Even when a wife is, is an unbeliever or living in an unbelief, living like an unbeliever, the Lord uses my friends' godly submission to bless and sanctify the husband and the family. My friends, submission is not natural. The power for a wife to walk in submission is found by abiding in Jesus Christ. According to, first, according to John 15 verse 5. Hallelujah. The husband love in a marriage relationship is very important. The husband part of blessing is to love his wife as Jesus Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. According to Ephesians 5, 25, 27. In addition, in addition this morning, my friend, to loving his wife as Christ loved the church, the husband is called to love his wife as he loves himself 
according to Ephesians 5.23. We do not deserve the love God has given us in Jesus Christ. It is the husband's privilege to, to love his wife with the same type of love. Even when she does not deserve it. Hallelujah. Even when a wife is an unbeliever or is living like an unbeliever, the Lord uses the, use, uses the godly husband love to bless and sanctify the wife and the family. According to 1 Corinthians 7.14. This kind of love is not natural. The power for a husband to walk in love towards his wife is found by abiding in Jesus Christ, according to John 15, verse 5. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Marriage wildfires. Because marriage was established to reflect the mystery of Jesus Christ and the church, the enemy hates godly marriages. By attacking Christian marriages, the enemy can hinder an entire family from pursuing, from pursuing relationships of recklessness, reliance on Jesus Christ. The fire traps of offense occur more in marriage than in most other relationships. Every Christian marriage will experience seasons when one or both spouse will fail to love, submit to one another. Hallelujah. Praise God. In addition to the Lord's purpose of deliverance, transformation, restoration, and destroying the devil's work, the Lord has additional purpose for spouse involved in marriage conflict. For wives, the opportunity at the peace fire is to ask the Lord, how do you want me to submit to my husband in this situation? For husbands, the opportunity at the peace fire when offense occur is to ask the Lord, how do you want me to love my wife in this situation? When the Lord reveals what he wants, you, 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 you do so. Ask him for the grace to do it in the power of the Holy Spirit. In the power of the Holy Spirit. The opportunity of to love and submit to one another is of greater importance than the opportunity to be right. To get your way or to win an argument. Wildfire accelerants often manifest in material conflict. When they are exposed, take them to the Lord at a peace fire and let him remove the anger. Heal the wounds, heal the wounds uh, from the past, uh, from the past, my friends. Heal the wounds from the past and replace the bitterness with his love. With his love, with his grace, with his mercy, and with his peace. Hallelujah. Praise God. My friends, this morning, it has been really a joy and a great privilege to minister the word of God and to be here with you this morning. God bless you richly. Do have a wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow. I trust the Lord that you enjoy this message. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God.